What's going on, swim fans? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the six most important swimming metrics to track so that you can improve and swim faster and smarter than ever before. Now, believe me, there are so many different things that you could be tracking in your swimming. Whether you have a smartwatch or you don't have a smartwatch, no problem. In this video, I'm gonna simplify it. So that way, all of these numbers and all these different things that you see out there are all gonna make sense, but you're gonna pay attention to the metrics metrics that matter most. Now, if you guys are new here to my swim pro, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Ferris Sabetti, co-founder and CEO, and I'm gonna help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and let me know down below in the comments which metric is most important to you, and also let me know any other questions you might have. Also, if you aren't already in the My Swim Pro Facebook group, make sure you join that. We have over 10, 15,000 swimmers from over 100 different countries, trying to get to that next level. So if you're a beginner swimmer or you're a triathlete, a master swimmer or a competitive elite swimmer, whatever, make sure you join that group, be a part of it and I'll see you guys in there. Let's go ahead and get right into the video. So the first metric that I wanna talk about is your lap splits, right? This is how fast you're actually going. You know what they say, what gets measured gets improved. So if you measure your time and you know how fast you're swimming, whether you're swimming with an interval clock or you have a smartwatch, doesn't really matter because you need to know what you're doing if you want it to improve. So once you know how to swim and you can swim from one end of the pool to the other, whether it's open water or in the pool, now you need to measure it and you need to understand how long it takes you to get from point A to point B. Because what's the point of swimming if you don't know how fast you're going, right? Now a lot of people swim for mental clarity, which is absolutely amazing. But even when you swim for mental clarity, you're still measuring your time in some capacity. Because you might only have 30 minutes to swim or one hour to swim. Maybe you have nothing on your agenda and you can swim for five hours straight. Good for you, that'd be awesome. However, for most of us, you've gotta measure what you're doing when you're doing it. And so it's really important to understand your lap splits. You also can see your progress over time. So if you know that you swim 50 meters in 50 seconds, and then a week later or a month later, now it becomes 48 seconds, and you can do that with less strokes or with less, less difficulty, with less effort, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, that means you're making progress. So it's really important whether you're competing in a competition and you're trying to go 0.05 seconds faster in the 50 meter freestyle, or you're just trying to swim an average pace of two seconds faster per 50, you need to know how fast you're going. So I definitely recommend understanding your lap splits. If you have a smartwatch like this Garmin uh, 4Runner 945, it'll automatically track the lap splits for you and it'll show you how fast you're swimming. So that's really, really awesome. And it allows you to do variable speed training, which means you can do different sets or different repetitions at a different speed. And that's really important because if you're trying to get to that next level, if you wanna get a better workout in, or if you're trying to swim faster, you need to do variable speed training. It's really difficult to do this if you don't know how fast you're going. So an example of variable speed training would be something like 650s freestyle, where you descend one through six, meaning you get faster each of the 650s. Now, if you don't have any way to measure how fast you're going, it can be really difficult to know if you're actually getting faster. You might be trying more, diff more putting more effort every single 50, but you're not actually getting any faster. So when you measure your lap splits, you're actually able to see and identify if you're actually getting faster. This applies for doing negative split, uh, best average, or if you're trying to do different interval training and trying to get a different pace established, you're not able to do that if you don't know how fast you're going. So step number one is understand how fast you swim so that step number two, you can do variable speed training, and then step number three, see your progress over time. And obviously with a smartwatch, that makes it a lot easier because you don't have to think about this and you don't have to worry about a clock on the side of the pool. You can just follow it along with your smartwatch. Now the second thing you want to pay attention to is your stroke count. And a lot of times actually, I talk to swimmers about stroke count before I talk about how fast you swim. I just listed how fast you swim because that's like the most obvious one. But when we really break it down, I really like stroke count. And there's this acronym called MDPS, which stands for Max Distance Per Stroke. Now this is 
is really important because if you understand how many strokes you take, you start to figure out what your swimming efficiency is. This is like in a car, it's called your fuel economy. How many miles per gallon are you trying to get? So ideally, you wanna increase your distance per stroke and that will decrease your stroke count. If you take longer distance between each stroke, you're gonna take less strokes but on each length, that means you're moving through the water more efficiently. The only way to know that is if you're tracking it. Tracking your stroke count allows you to understand how efficient you're moving through the water. Now, we're gonna talk about how that can actually be false in just a little bit, but you need to keep in mind how many strokes you're taking, but also how long it takes you to take those strokes. Because sure, I can take five strokes per length in freestyle, but I might have to kick underwater for half the length, and I might have to float on my side for a long time before I can get to the next stroke. I would obviously take less strokes, have a longer distance per stroke, but I'd be swimming less efficiently. So hopefully that makes sense. Now this also factors into the swimming equation. I did a full video on the swimming equation, breaking that down for all my swim nerds out there. But there's a swimming segment of the swimming equation called CC multiplied by SR. That means cycle count multiplied by stroke rate. Here's an example of how that plays out. Let's say you take 10 strokes, let's say breaststroke, 10 stroke cycles in one length of the pool, multiply that by two seconds per stroke. So I can do a full stroke every two seconds. That would mean my time for that 25 meter distance is 20 seconds. If I want to swim faster, so we'll go back to lap splits, if I want to go 18 seconds, well, I can either take nine strokes but maintain the same stroke rate or I can change my stroke rate. So these variables work with each other and that's how you can swim faster overall. Now another great metric that I like to talk about with athletes is the heart rate because this is really a measure of how much effort you're applying into your workout. How hard are you actually working? And heart rate and zone training is actually very common in every form of fitness, and it's also important in swimming as well. I have here defined as effort level based on fitness and exertion, because you can have two people do the exact same workout, both in the pool and out of the pool, and they could be applying completely different levels of exertion, be in completely different heart rate zones. That's why it's not really a great idea to try and do the same workout as someone else unless you've modified it, whether it's the intervals, the distance, the intensity, because most likely you don't have the same conditioning or the same aerobic capacity or anaerobic capacity as the person that you're following that workout. That's why the more individualized and personalized workouts you can do for yourself, the better. So when we're talking about heart rate, this is basically zone training. There's different zones at different intensities, and that really takes your heart rate to different levels. The more time you spend in different heart rate levels, the more capacity you build in those. So for example, if you do a lot of really, really high intensity, fast swimming, you're gonna build an anaerobic capacity because your heart rate's going to spike really high and then recover, spike really high, and recover. If you're doing more aerobic training, like you're doing, I don't know, 10, 500 meter freestyle repetitions, you're most likely gonna be in a lower heart rate zone, but it's still gonna be endurance and you're gonna build aerobic capacity. So the great thing about tracking your heart rate is you don't have to necessarily put two fingers on your neck like we did once upon a time. There's amazing technology out there that can actually track your heart rate for you and you can see how much time you're spending in different zones. You can do that in the My Swim Pro app. You can also do that in today's sponsor, Garmin. The Forerunner 945 can do all of this and it's absolutely amazing piece of technology. So if you're in the market for a new smartwatch, the Garmin Forerunner 945 is great for tracking your swims and tons of other fitness activities. Now I've been testing this watch out for a few weeks and it's an absolute powerhouse. If you're a data nerd, you're gonna love it and this is a must have smartwatch. You can track pool and open water swims. The watch also measures your distance, pace, stroke efficiency, calories, and has special underwater heart rate tracking. Of course, you can sync all of your workouts to the My Swim Pro app with Garmin Connect. You can actually sync a workout from the My Swim Pro app to your Garmin smartwatch, and you can have the watch coach you through the workout set by set, which is actually pretty amazing. It's like having a coach on your wrist with real-time data. You can write your own swim workouts, or you can sync a training plan that's personalized to you 
in the MySwim Pro app to your Garmin smartwatch. It's also got handy distance alerts so you don't have to stop and check your watch during long swims. It also has pace alerts to keep you on track during those pool workouts. It also tracks your VO2 max, your stress levels, and it even tells you how each workout impacts your aerobic and anaerobic fitness. That's pretty cool. It has built-in safety tracking features that give you peace of mind if you're swimming alone. So if you're into fitness tracking and you're into all sorts of fitness activities like running, cycling, triathlon, hiking, even strength training, this is definitely a great smartwatch to consider. And with all of that functionality, the battery life is two full weeks, which is absolutely insane. It's way better than any other smartwatch out there that can do similar stuff. It also has music capability. So that's definitely a win. So make sure you head over to the description down below to grab a Forerunner 945 or other top smartwatches by Garmin. Great company, great products. Let's go ahead and get right back into the video. We've talked about heart rate. Now let's talk about the next metric that I absolutely love. It's called the SWALF. Now SWALF score is something that's actually defined in the Garmin app, in the MySwim Pro app, and it's basically your swimming efficiency. I made an analogy to the miles per gallon in a car, but actually SWALF is probably a better analogy for that because it is the true measure of your efficiency factoring in not only your stroke count, but also your lap split. So how fast you're moving and how many strokes you take, your distance per stroke. Now the way it's calculated is actually pretty simple. In a 25 meter pool, all you have to do is figure out how many strokes you take and how long it took you to take it. So if you took 20 strokes and it took you 20 seconds to get across the pool, then your SWALF would be a 40. Now this swimming efficiency, this SWALF score is unique to you. So it doesn't really matter what someone else goes. What matters is that you're improving your SWALF score over time. So maybe your score is 50, 70, 35, doesn't really matter. The goal is to make progress towards improving your efficiency. There's two ways to do it. You can either improve your stroke count, so take less strokes, or you can swim faster. Now it's great if you can do both, but most likely there's gonna be a give and a take. You're gonna end up improving one a little bit more easily than the other. I did say that the numbers don't matter, but if your score is like 100 or 80 or 90, that's too high, it shouldn't be that high. So try and get under 60, 50, 40 if you're really good, 30 if you're pro elite, elite level, but really make sure you're focusing on your own number and improving that over time. You also have a unique swap score based on what stroke you're doing. So obviously you can't compare your breaststroke to your freestyle. You're gonna have different efficiencies and different scores for each of those different strokes. I actually did a full video breaking down SWALF, what it is, how it works, how you calculate it, and maybe we'll link that down below in the description. It's also available on the My Swim Pro channel, so make sure you check it out. Fun fact about the SWALF score, if you are going to calculate it manually by counting how many strokes you take or just looking at the pace clock on the wall or someone timing you, just remember to normalize it to a 25 meter pool. This works if you swim in a 25 yard pool or you swim in a 30 meter pool. Your SWALF score is actually the same regardless of what pool you swim at because you always normalize it to 25 meters. Now, if you don't wanna do any math, no problem because the Garmin smartwatch or the MySwim Pro app does this for you so that way we just give you your SWALF score and we take care of the calculations on the back end. This is something that's also great to measure over time. I highly recommend doing sets where you really focus on improving your SWALF score, sort of like your swimming golf. The lower the number, the better, the more efficient. No handicaps for you. Just try and get that number down, or no mulligans, I should say. Make sure you get that SWALF score down. Now, the fifth most important metric to keep an eye on is your distance. Now, notice how this is actually marked as number five and not number one. Oftentimes, swimmers say that they're just trying to hit a distance goal. From a goal-setting perspective, that is awesome. From a swim training perspective, the distance that you do doesn't really matter as much as some of the other metrics that we've talked about. Now, obviously they're all very important or else I wouldn't be talking about them. But when it comes to distance, it's not just the distance of your workout. It's actually the distance of your set, the distance that you do in total of each of the different strokes that you do within a workout, how much distance you've done per zone. So we talked about the aerobic capacity versus the anaerobic capacity. If you're spending a lot of time doing aerobic capacity, 
you're not spending that much time maybe doing anaerobic capacity. So making sure you have a healthy balance of each of those is really important. You also wanna factor in your distance per day, per week, per month, per season, and that really factors into this uh, rule, which is called the 10% rule of increasing distance, increasing volume, which basically states that you shouldn't increase your total volume by more than 10% per week. What that means is if you swim 10,000 meters in one week, the following week you shouldn't ramp up to more than 11,000 meters, you know, add 1,000 meters. If you're already doing 30,000 meters per week, you don't wanna ramp up more than 33 or 35,000 meters per week. A lot of that depends on how much training you have in your background, how much training background you have, uh, and other training that you're doing outside of the pool as well. But what happens is if you break this 10% rule, after a few weeks, you're gonna to start to break down your body, you might get injured, and your performance will start to suffer. So really keep an eye on that 10% rule of increasing volume. And then the sixth and final, my favorite actually, is called workout density. This is something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's very important to understand. This has to do with the volume of swimming that you do per unit of time. Let me break that down for you. Basically, it's how much swimming you're doing inside of a workout based on how much time you have allocated to it. So for example, let's say you swim 1,000 meters in about 15 minutes. If you can maintain that training in volume and that density, then in one hour, you'll swim 4,000 meters in that period, in that block, that period of time. Now you could also do 1,000 meters in 30 minutes, maybe you have more breaks between sets, you have a slower interval, you have uh, broken up your sets into shorter distances. So instead of swimming, you know, uh, 10 100, you're doing 40 25s. That's an extreme example, but you get the idea. So instead of 15 minutes, it takes you 30 minutes. So now in one hour, your volume and density is only gonna be 2,000 meters in that one hour. So you could have the same swimmer do two different types of workouts and one will take half as much time as the other. Now this is something that's important to keep in mind, it has to do with that 10% rule as well, where your body will break down differently and require more recovery time based on this workout density. So if the density is very, very high, uh, most likely you're in an aerobic capacity type of training. If your volume or your density is very, very low, it either means you're recovering or you're tapering or you're just not pushing yourself hard enough. <laughs> so, you know, if the same swimmer can range from 1,000 meters per 15 minutes to 1,000 meters per 30 minutes, the workouts should be different. This is why two swimmers don't really need to do the exact same workout unless they have similar goals, they have similar speeds, and they have similar motivations, of course, because this workout density, the distance, your efficiency, all these things are different, and this is why personalized swim workouts are so important. So if you're looking for a personalized training program, something that is dynamic to you, make sure you download the My Swim Pro app available for iOS and Android, and we can deliver you a personalized training plan at a fraction of the cost of hiring a personal trainer. And so as a personal coach myself, I know the value in delivering this type of one-on-one -on -one coaching experience, and that's what you get with the My Swim Pro app. Finally, if you haven't already checked out my book, Swim Like a Pro, available in paperback, Kindle, hardcover, and audiobook, it is linked down below in the description, 16 chapters, what you need to do in the water, out of the water, mental perspective as well. It's all packaged in there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed, and in the comments, let me know which swimming metric is your favorite. I really wanna get to know which metric is your favorite, and of course, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to let us know. Wish you guys the very best, happy swimming, and I'll see you at the next video.